YouTubers, it's your boy making it in prints, and today we have a uh, I won't say big unboxing, but just like some few upgrades. So, uh, today is the i7 3020 and the X ASRock X6 X79 Extreme 7 board. And the reason before you guys get to any conclusion of why I upgrade to my uh, from my i5 is because my i5 could have run my games. Yes, it did. Uh, was able to max out my cards here and there, but it wasn't constant. And uh, I would say it has a slight, slight bottleneck. It's not a major, but it had a slight bottleneck. Uh, you know, in Battlefield. I mean, I'm sure you got when you guys see my videos. You know, you guys. Uh, you guys see where it was giving like 99% of both GPU. That's because I had to down clock the GPU in order to have the max out. If I run them at one point, at least 1.1 gigahertz, the, the usage of those GPU will fall like into the 80s. So it shows you like it never really had have the muscle power to drive the car. You know what I mean? So um, so I, that's why I went to an i7 because uh, with Battlefield, the thing is with Battlefield is that a lot of people say that Hyper 30 doesn't matter what it does matter in Battlefield 3. You know, that extra, remember Battlefield 3 does use all the cores that are available. So with that Hyper 30 on, it does give you that extra oomph that you need to drive your video cards, especially powerful, powerful video cards that I have. So that's why I went and I upgraded. So yeah, so let's get into the unboxing and let me stop running my mouth. So the box just came like a couple minutes ago. Look all raggedy and stuff, like they dropped it or something, but I'm sure nothing is damaged anyways. Uh, so this is the board. Jeez and Pete, look, it's just a big ass box, like freaking heavy. Um, where's that down here? And the processor. So that's all we need for get this out of the way okay so this is I would say this processor can overclock but you in order to overclock this processor you have to use the base uh, you have to use the ba uh, base clock of uh, 1.25 and use the, the, the partial lock multiplier because this is part it's a partial lock uh, processor I think uh, you can overclock it all the way until 4.4 uh, gigahertz. That's a max you can overclock it. So you have to use the bus speed to, you know, um, to give you that extra uh, megahertz out of it. Um, you can clock this all the way to 5 gigahertz on all four cores with hyper threading as well. And um, keep in mind these are 130 watt processors, so I recommend water cooling if you're going to overclock to the extreme with this. But uh, this 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 processor gives you a lot of value for your money. I mean, for a hundred and uh, you know, for a hundred and freaking, uh, Amy, I'm sorry, not a hundred, but for three hundred and nineteen dollars, <laughs> um, for three hundred nineteen dollars, you can't beat it. Um, and you know, as I said, it's an i7, hyper threading, thing megabyte of cache, you know, twenty LGA twenty eleven, and uh. As I said, the benefit of this processor mainly is that you get to you get to go to the enthusiast line platform by getting a board. And this was a combo buy. This was a combo buy off Newegg, um, and I paid up I think five fifty nine with a combo. So I mean, this this is like an entry level processor to the twenty eleven platform. And um, as I said, it's it's a great processor from what I've seen in benchmark. It does keep up with the Sandy Bridges like 2600, 2600 and 2700K and i5 in gaming. So you won't see a major performance. But the best thing about this processor is that it supports PCI Express 3.0 right off the bat. You don't have to win an Ivory Bridge. Um, it has 40 lanes built into it and two two more extra megabyte of cache, which which equals to 10. So I mean, it's it's. You know, it's the, the best processor right now to get if you don't want to get a six core, none of six core, which is very expensive at this moment. So I would call this like a niche processor to the 2011 platform. 
So yeah, um, let me stop yabbing. And um, I could take it out, but uh, man, should I do an unboxing? I guess I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it. I might as well. Um, so you take this thing off. Okay, you have to cut this thing here. I guess I gotta cut the sides. All right, keep in mind, this doesn't come with an eat sink because Intel decided it's pointless to run and uh, to include with an eat sink when most users, I'm thinking, not even most, 99.9% .9 of users would get an aftermarket uh, eat sink to run these processors, you know what I mean? So they, they didn't include it with these processors. As, as you can see, how big the processor is. It's retarded. It's huge. Look at that. It's pretty big. So, yeah. It's pretty much a processor for you. That's the back of it. That's 20, 2011 pins. So yeah, it's a big processor. Um, that's pretty much it for this unboxing. I mean, get the i7 badge, which I'm definitely going to put on my case. So yeah. And um, that's pretty much it, really. Ain't nothing really to show here. Um, now for the good part, the board. And the reason why I got this board because it has some a nice aesthetics to it. You know, it got that e-pipe and everything to it so I didn't want to be cheap so let's get to the board so um yeah let's unbox this so this is a lot of stuff for this board look at this man this is ridiculous look look at that look at that let me turn this around for you guys look at that this is crazy so yeah, um, it features, as you can see, DigiPower, which is uh, which is by adapting digital pulse with modulation. Um, it features an advanced two, uh, twelve plus two power phase, Craftsman e design, easy design, premium gold caps. Um, really, it doesn't really do much. It's just for like aesthetic reason, to be honest with you. Um, PCI uh, PCI 6 3.0 and um, X fan just to cool off the the salt bridge because it kind of run a little hot. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's get to the unboxing. So let's let's move this aside first. See what we all get with this thing. So we get a PCI Express. Ad, um, adapter, which is pretty much you can plug this in your uh, floppy, the, the, uh, your floppy, your floppy port where you usually put your floppy drive. You can put put this right there instead of the floppy and plug it in the board, and you get um, additional two USB 3.0. So that's a 3.0 adapter. You get your X79 Extreme 7 software setup guide. So this is just a setup guide for the software. Um, and you get your quick installation guide manual in a couple of different languages as you can see. So let me put that back. I just want to keep it neat and organized. In here you get your three-way SLI bridge. I don't have to take it out of the package. I can already tell you as you can see. You can see the three things. So I want to take it out of the package. You get, um, this is just a SLI bridge, regular SLI connector. Um, you get a couple SATAs here. You get a in total of about six black SATA cable, which is pretty awesome. I'm going to use two of them. Um, you get a uh, Molex to uh, SATA power cable, and you get a um, ah, this is cool. You get a rear rear uh, rear. PCI slot um, connection for your USB 3.0. So if you don't want to run it in the front where the floppy this usually goes, you can put it at the back. So that's pretty new, pretty neat to have. So if I wanted to run run it at the back, I could, which is pretty awesome. Um, you get two of them actually. You get two of those uh, Molex to um, side of power cable, and you got your I/O shield. So that's pretty much it for this side. Straightforward. That's it. Now for the, the part, the most important part here. Let's 
put this aside. Let's take out the, the board itself. I guess they put a pad, like a pad in the middle to protect the, the area of the ram and all that stuff. So yeah. So let's get this thing out here. Take it off. Alright. So that's your ASRock Extreme um, X79 Extreme 7. Uh, this is pretty much a 2011 socket. And this board got some weight, man. I'm telling you, with these e tink on there, got some weight, but it looks so, 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 so sexy. I gotta, I just gotta say that long because it just looks so damn fine. I will be the first one to show you the Extreme 7 because it seems like there's no really a video of it. So now you get to see what it actually looked like. Um, so. This is your salt bridge with a fan because I guess the salt bridge kind of run hot, so they need a fan to cool it off. You get uh, in total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten SATA ports. Um, three, six of them which runs off the Intel, and these two runs off a uh, uh, out of chip, which is not Intel, pretty much like an onboard chip. So th these three, these three right here, where where the the sticker stop runs off the Intel South Bridge, and the other two runs off a uh, another party party's chip. Um, you get five PCI Express 3.0 uh, slots, one PCI slot for like you legacy users. Um, you got a post LED readout. Um, let me see how much fan connection. You have one fan connector here. You have one there. You have one there. That's three. You have one here, which is four. Um, so you got four fan connectors there. And uh, you get three six dim slots. The reason why they include six dim slots with this is because for people who had X58 platform and don't want to buy additional RAM, they can put all six in here and it will and it use triple channel. So the processor does support triple channel as well. That's why you user wants to use triple channel. However, if you want to use do, uh, quad channel, you got to put it in the uh leave uh you gotta put it out at the ends so you gotta put one here one here one here and one here not in the center if you put any ram in the center and fill up the slot you're gonna be run in triple channel mode instead of quad the quads are at the ends the two end uh slots so yeah that's that's pretty much unboxing i mean it looks really really nice man i can't i can't i'm can't say i'm really satisfied with the way it looked it just looks really, really, really nice. And I mean, it's worth a buy because I'll be having this this for a very, very long time. This is what so I'm saying. Once I get, Since I have this platform, I don't have to upgrade. The only thing I will upgrade is my process. That's pretty much it. Otherwise, from that, I will be having this board for a while until it, Intel come out with the next um, Enthusiast line rig. Yeah. So, yeah. That's it for my unboxing, guys.